Hi. Now, don't you make one sound, Alistair Cameron, when I take my hand away. Hi. Hi, you're a Cameron, all right. Of all the thrown beggars. But how did you know it was me? I knew you were on the island. And no other boy has the wild streak of the Camerons. Your father all over again. But who are you? I'm Duncan Moore. Ha <laughs> ha! What are you doing here? I heard murder beaten and another man leave the house. I thought it'd be a good idea to follow them. Ah, uh -huh. uh, the London life has not taken the healing blood from you, but... Whoosh now! He's using that lamp again. Right, Eve, no! Did you see who the other man was at the house? Only from the back. He's the small one. And the third man down there? I've no idea. Ach, that long red fellow Murdo Beaton is at the oars. Do you think they'll sink? It's not a very big boat. Oh, if it was yourself at the oars, you'd be thinking it was big enough. What's that building down there? Oh, that's the salmon fisherman's bothy. You can see one of the nets there spread out on the drying poles. A seal made an awful mess of it. This place has the name of being haunted, by me mostly. <laughs> Many a good summon I've lifted from the pool back there under the falls. But are you allowed to? I, I thought... The Lord puts the fish in the river, and they are there for the taking. As long as the keeper isn't after catching you at it. But who do the fish belong to? Whoever has the lodge. Snow. Not a thing can I see. Lie still now, Alistair. Three men went out in the boat, and now there are only two. It's back to the house with you now, Alistair. You'll need all your time, or the red fellow will be at your heels. Do you think you can manage? I think so. And if you can't, I'll come with you. But I'd rather be on the heels of that fellow with murder Ruhr. I'll manage. Right then. Away you go. If you make your way up to the croft by the drain, you can't go wrong. Come back and see me tomorrow. We'll have time for a talk. I can Amaha!
Have you been out? No. Fine weather we're having. It's time I was milking the cows before going to the kirk. You'd best stay at home, boy. The service is in Gaelic. And no playing outside, mind. Today is the Sabbath day. Can't I just go for a walk? Seems a shame being cooped up in here. I expect you will please yourself. Where did you go last night? What do you mean? You went out after my father. I heard you. I went to see what he was doing. I could have told you if you'd asked me. You could have told me? Of course. He went down to the salmon fishing station, didn't he? But how do you know? Oh, I heard him twice before going out late on a Saturday night. The second time it happened, I was a wee bit frightened. So I got up and ran after him, asked him where he was going. He said there was a wind springing up and he would need to take in the wee boat because the fishermen would be out until Monday morning. I see. And that's what he did again last night, isn't it? What else would take him out of the house in the middle of the night?
Good day to you, Alistair. None the worse for your adventures last night. No, but I only just beat murder back to the cloth by the skin of my teeth. <laughs> aye. Aye, you're as thrown as your father. There's no doubt about it. Ah, oh, there's good heel and bone here. And when the bone is right, the flesh and muscle will come in the Lord's good time. It is wonderful what Hilaire and son will do for a man. What are you doing? Just sorting out a few flies. They don't seem big enough to hold fish. Oh, wait you. This little fellow here will land us a fine brown trout. We'll see how Peter Ross manages in the loch. Who's Peter Ross? Yon's Peter Ross. A fancy name, to be sure, but there are fancier ones than him. There's teal and silver and black spider and royal coachman. And this black lad here with the red tail is known as Bloody Butcher. Show me which is which, please. The flies will wait till you and me have a crack together. Tell me, what has been going on? Well, it, it all started on the train. There was this man with a scar on his hand, and he jumped off and was murdered. And there's something hidden in the hill of a red fox. And if they find out that I've got the message... Our story should start at the beginning, Alistair Big. Now then, let me be hearing it. It started on the train from Glasgow to Malague. I, I looked up and saw this man in the corridor. that? A uh, party from the lodge. The fellow who waved will be Major Cassell. The other two will be his guests. Some of those lads from the south with their expensive gear. <laughs> They're not fit to catch a cold, let alone a good brown trout. I read the story of the killing in yesterday's paper. But the rest? You've kept it all to yourself. Yes, I, I didn't know who to tell. And you were afraid something might happen to you. Yes. The message the man with the scar gave you. You hadn't shown it to a living soul. No! You do believe me, don't you? I surely, I... I do believe you, Alistair Bake. But you're too like your father. Just give me time to get used to being an old man. I'm not a boy any longer. What are we going to do now? And the man last night, the one who came to see murder beaten, who do you think he was? Oh, likely enough he would be the fellow from a train. The man with the bright blue eyes. I don't doubt he silenced the fellow with the scar and came to the house to tell Mordo. How did he know his way to Achmore? And why didn't he question me? We were sitting in the same carriage. Think. You said the man with the scar hid the address label on your case. So the other fellow would have no idea where you were bound for. And as for coming to Achmore, uh, like as not Mardo Roach has been mixed up with him since a while back. I, I, I'll warrant it's not the first time he's had a crack with blue eyes. What do we do? First, we go back to my house. Maybe we should go to the police. Aye, we could. But I've known for some time that the red fellow was up to his neck in some dark doings. And it is the habit in this place to steer clear of the police where our own men are concerned. We kept our own laws before the English brought theirs to the Highlands. It is the old law that will try Mardo Roach in the end. Set yourself down here beside me, and let's be seeing the message he gave you. I folded the piece of paper into a small square and tucked it in my stamp book. Ah, here it is. It's not here. Anywhere. 
I doubt the red fellow was there before you. Unless it dropped out of your wallet. But it couldn't have. I know I put it inside this stamp book. And I haven't taken my wallet out since I came to Achmore. But have you always carried it with you? Well, no. But... No matter. You know well enough what was written on it. Of course. I can see it now. Exactly as it was written. Would that be what the lawyers call a considered statement? I mean, can you really remember how it was written? To the letter. I'm sure I can. I read it over and over, and I know just how it was written. On you go. Take your time and write it down. D, one, five. Are you sure the D one five was written like that? A capital D and a single stroke in the figure five? Certain. Then how do you know it's meant to be a one? But what else could it be? It might be an I. Well, yes, it might have been DI5. DI5? But that doesn't make sense. Oh, there's sense in it right enough. It could be a signature. You see, Alistair, there's a special branch of intelligence at the Ministry of Defence whose job it is to keep an eye on the enemies of this country. All that some folk know of it is that it's called DI-5. Then you mean the man with the scar could have been a secret agent of ours? I mean just that. Then we've got to go to the police now. Where's your evidence? You haven't got the message anymore. That's it. And, and you were with me on the cliff last night. You saw Murder Beaton take those two men out in the boat, and only one of them came back. Those two things have got to be tied up somehow. <sighs> More than maybe. But we must bide a time until we are better fixed. But we've got to find the answers. We'll find them. Never fear. Answers are funny things, Alistair Bay. They come to some man better in the open air. On your feet, Alec. And we'll see if Peter Ross will lift us a trout from the lock while we fish for some answers as well. Oh, you have a dour look on you, like your father before you. What is it now? I just think we should go and search the hill of the Red Fox instead of fishing. Uh, there's time enough for that, Alistair, when you have the spring of heather in your legs and you can stride up the hill with the best of them. If I'm spared and well, I'll put the legs on you, fit to tackle Skor Amati. We have the two foxes to deal with, the hill and that other long red fox at Achmoor. I don't understand how Murdo Beaton could be a friend of my father's. Ach, you're no Benicia. Murdo Ruach, a friend of your father's. If Black Alistair were here today, he'd take Murdo by his long neck and throw him out of Achmoor. Not that I am against Mistress Cameron. She was not to know the man at all, at all. But what's my mother got to do with him? Oh, it was herself gave him the croft. And him always grumbling about the high rent he was paying. He hasn't paid any rent at all. Murder Ruach has never paid any rent. Then how did he get the croft? He wrote a letter to my mother after she got back to London. He said he was a friend of my father's, and that my father said he could have the croft as long as we were away. I would like to get my hands on that long crater and break every bone in his miserable body. There you see, Peter Ross didn't do so badly, eh? Don't look surprised, but maybe we are more important than I think. Make no sudden movement and take your time about it, but just glance over at that hill beyond the end of the loch. Easy now. That's enough. Tell me, what did you see? I didn't see anything. Only something flashing in the sun, about halfway up the hillside. Aye, 
something flashing in the sun. Some fellow up there has a glass trained on us. But who? We're not doing anything wrong. Wrong, no. But I am thinking the red fellow is after knowing where you are. But why spy on me? You know a deal too much. This is no idle play, Alistair. Mark that well. One man has died already. The less you know about this business from now onwards, the better for you. Myself will keep an eye open. But, but I just can't do nothing. That is exactly what you will do. Nothing. And if the Red Fox is thinking to turn on you, I doubt himself will think again, now he knows you and I have had a crack together. A harmless enough creature of the fox until it is cornered. Then it can be dangerous, and cowardly too. It attacks the weakest, the youngest prey. Remember that, my boy. <laughs>